What's up, everybody? This is DJF. I'm here to talk to you guys about the whole Tony Khan. I would call it a situation, but let's call it what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. It is a debacle, okay? In the last month, we have seen Tony Khan make all of the wrong decisions. People are talking about and putting their eyes on AEW for all the wrong reasons. Let's start with the all-in footage. I get wanting to use backstage footage to further a storyline. I totally understand that. Why wouldn't you? Use it to your advantage. Here's the problem with that. We're already so far past it, people have moved on. To be honest, people don't care anymore. That was almost a year ago. You should have struck while the iron was hot. You had an opportunity to use it to your advantage, and all you did was sit on the footage until you felt it was necessary to respond to a podcast that a former talent was on where he spoke the truth. Let's be honest here. If you look at the footage and you look at what that talent said, there's no discretion here that leads you to believe that somebody was lying. He told the truth. All you did was provide the footage that backed up what this talent was saying. So you didn't do yourself any favors because the one thing that was also shown here is that it happened in front of the boss and the boss did nothing. Again, when you have a former talent that says he'd rather be your friend than be your boss and all you do is provide more concrete proof, that's a problem. And trying to use it to further the storyline between the Young Bucks and FTR going into the pay-per-view as if this feud needed any more substance. Listen, we get it. These two tag teams are great. Some think that one or the other is the best of all time, and that's okay. That alone drives a storyline. Now, people really weren't clamoring for another match, but this is how we ended up. And we're trying to use this footage to further the storyline. It does nothing here. It did nothing but make the company look pathetic in a sad attempt to draw extra eyes to this match that truly didn't need it. Moving forward, now you have a situation where Tony Khan appears on TV. Now, we could have done the whole hiring of Jack Perry back, could have done a backstage segment where they meet, maybe have an actual sit-down conversation. Air that. But the fact that now, Tony Khan has appeared on TV after stating for so long he would not be an on-screen talent. The minute you step into that ring, and the minute you take a bump, you become an on-air talent. You can cut a backstage promo, you can make an announcement on national TV, go on a pay-per-view, announce a new signing. That's okay. You're not making it about you. However, when you step through the ropes and you take a gut shot, which was sold horribly, and then you take a Meltzer driver, what was the point in that? What was the ultimate goal here? To gain sympathy for yourself? If anything, it made you look more sad and pathetic. And it's not the sympathy you want. It's the sad, why is this guy doing it? This is literally a guy who's running a company who is using his dad's money to fund his Saturday morning action figure company. And he's going out on national TV taking up precious TV time. Something that everybody will tell you is what truly matters. To take a bump to further put over the Bucks and Okada and Jack Perry. Why? Did anybody truly think after leaving that, that, man, that was such a great segment. Man, Tony Khan went out there and made me want to see him come back from this and see him get his revenge. If anything, he took it and I don't want to see him again. But was that the end of it? No, of course not. It's the night before the NFL draft. Coincidentally, tying into the fact that Tony Khan has cameras following him from the NFL network. Documenting what he's going through between the NFL draft concerning the Jacksonville Jaguars, a team which his father owns, and his company and the management of AEW from the day-to-day -day operations standpoint. This is great for exposure for Tony to get additional eyes on the product that may not normally be there. However, he again went about it the wrong way. You don't have to be on TV to get people interested in your product. If your talent and your storylines are strong enough, people will tune in. People will watch. It should come naturally. Everybody knows what professional wrestling is. It's up to you to draw eyes. This was not the way to do it. And then Tony Khan proceeds to sit down and have a conversation with a couple of NFL Network analysts where he begins to talk about how it's tough being AEW, being the startup company, being the company that's fighting from the ground up. 
he refers to AEW as the Pepsi of professional wrestling, which I'm guessing was a subtle yet not that subtle dig against somebody that was a former talent. Again, the mentioning of a former talent that's no longer on your show, again, does nothing but remind people that he's not there. And then he had the gall to sit there and refer to the WWE, the global juggernaut, as the Harvey Weinstein of professional wrestling. Tony, you've stepped in it with both shoes. It's one thing if he were to take a pop shot at, say, Vince McMahon. Given everything that's going on, it seems a now-in-the-moment pop culture reference you could get away with. But the fact that you used Harvey Weinstein as the correlating example, the analogy of what WWE, the company is, is just disgraceful. And again, feeds into that sad and pathetic mindset that you are putting out there for the world to see and hear. You gain nothing from this. You look like somebody who is out there just saying things for the sake of saying things. You're not proving a point. You're not making people realize, oh, maybe Tony Khan is right. Maybe he brings up a valid reason as to why I shouldn't support this company any longer. And I should turn my support over to this new startup called AEW. No, if anything, he had people sit there and just question everything. This owner and booker, and I'm gonna use that term very loosely because as a booker, he is lacking in many, many ways is doing nothing to help his company. He is bringing attention to it for all the wrong reasons. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. As you're listening to my ideas on this and my viewpoints, remember that I have been a strong AEW advocate since day one. I firmly believed we needed an alternative to WWE. At the time, it was a horrible product, horrible storylines, horribly booked talent, wasted talent, and the wrong people in their positions. AEW was giving us something different. That hot indie style mixed with New Japan, mixed with Lucha Libre, bringing all the best of professional wrestling outside of the WWE together as an alternative. And since that time, we have watched Tony Khan make mistake after mistake after mistake. And I've been able to forgive him for a lot of stuff because, again, he's just a kid playing Booker. He's a guy that loves professional wrestling, but above all else is a fan. Unfortunately, his fandom clouds his judgment. And now we're starting to see what's happened. He has sided with the wrong people. He brought in a guy that made him millions of dollars and brought in so much attention to your weekly television and pay-per-view products, something that was so severely needed. I would dare say he was the Hulk Hogan of AEW when WCW brought in Hulk. He was that shot in the arm that you needed. And what happened? You squandered it because you couldn't separate being somebody's friend from somebody's boss and couldn't play the role of boss. You don't bring in a talent with the background and the history of a CM Punk and think you can just sit idly by and not do things. You have to be a proactive manager. You have to be a proactive booker. You have to be a proactive owner. Above all else, you own the company. You are the boss. It doesn't matter if it says EVP next to your name or contracted talent. That is the boss. You answer to him and to only him. You have to realize that Tony Khan is the boss. And unfortunately, Tony forgets that he is the boss. He'd much rather be your friend and try to create amazing shows, or in his words, great shows, everything is great, everything's moving forward great, everything's great, 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 that's all you ever hear Tony say, but we all know it's anything but. And this last faux pas by Tony, it's going to be hard to come back from. Some people are just looking at Tony like he is an absolute fool right now. I look at it as a situation where he is just sad. Tony Khan needs help in the form of additional support from a management standpoint. Tony needs to recluse himself and go back to handling the behind the scenes stuff in a boss manner. He needs to be the boss of AEW. He needs to be the guy that runs things. And until he changes that and takes control and starts acting like a boss, it will always be the inmates running the asylum. He's lost Cody Rhodes, Jade Cargill, 
and CM Punk in a matter of almost three years. Three of your best known talents on your roster are gone because you can't do your job effectively. And every time he steps in front of a microphone and those cameras go on, you get that deer in the headlights, coked out, Adderall ridden look from Tony that looks like he has to give a presentation in front of his economics class in 12th grade and he hates doing public presentations but can't help but try to soak in the adulation that he thinks exists for him. And he just continues to make mistake after mistake after mistake. So with that being said, Tony, you're never going to hear this. And that's perfectly fine. I don't expect a mediocre, subpar podcaster like myself to ever gain the eyes and attention of, of AEW. And that's okay. That's not my goal here. My goal is that for anybody listening, you can understand that you can support AEW. You can love AEW and all of their talent because let's face it, they've got an amazing roster right now. You cannot deny that. But as long as things continue the way that they are continuing with Tony Khan being at the forefront when he shouldn't be and continuing to make mistake after mistake and say wrong thing after wrong thing and continue to put his foot in his mouth This company is never going to succeed the way that we all truly want it to. Tony, you can fix this, but you have to want to fix this. I know how to fix it. Fans know how to fix it. And I'm even willing to wager there are people within that company that know how to fix it. But as long as Tony Khan wants to play wrestler and wants to play best friend, this company is going to continue to flounder. And with that, folks, I'm DJF reminding you, I'm better than you. You know it. I know it. And that's all I have. Hey, guys, it's Mark Rodriguez here. Hey, this is Juby Chan, also known as Ninja Juba. Just call me Wendy. Yep. And yeah, that was DJF here uh, giving his thoughts. And we decided to just start off with him directly because um, it was kind of hard to find like a good segue for it the way we do like whatever Jack Knives sends his uh, pre-recorded stuff. And uh, yeah, and also we didn't want you guys to be like looking around throughout the whole video to where his segment is. So we decided to start off right there. But uh, yeah, I mean just like the rest of us, DJF and I were big uh, AEW fans and we, we go to the live shows with them several times. It's surprising that... Even he's being slightly turned off with the product and and uh, just Tony Khan's stupid mistakes. And this is a super last minute update that will not be brought up during the podcast because we found out um, sometime uh, afterwards. But apparently Johnny informed us that um, AEW lost support from a big uh, Latin American. Yeah, AEW dropped from a major Latin American platform as a result to Tony's big yap a moment ago and uh, let me just see here yeah there was a multi-year streaming deal with Televisa Univision AEW is no longer going to be available on the VIX platform marking the second international broadcast deal that has ended without public notice and again this VIX? Is, yeah and Univision? yeah I have that <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we can't see AEW there anymore, thanks to Tony Khan opening his big yap. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, guys, now here's the rest of the podcast proper. We just wanted to kind of bring that up in there, and yeah, check it out. Here's yeah. our thoughts on what we call the Tony Khan is the dumbass episode of the Diving Cutter Podcast. Enjoy, guys. Hey, hey, Mark Rodriguez here, and you're watching America's number one short firm insomnia, the Diving Cutter Wrestling Podcast. And with me are William White, aka Ninja Panda 1980, Jack Maz from Jack Maz Reviews. And this is Ninja Juby, also known as uh, Wendy or whatever you want to call me. Juby Chan, have your have at it. Yo. Yep. Yep, and Johnny will be coming along shortly during the video here. So, right now, we got some recent happenings in AW that are just uh, too big to ignore. And they're also too big for us to just kind of, you know, glaze over and whatever. So we will be reviewing <laughs> Dynasty in a separate episode. This episode will mostly be about the recent events of the last episode of Dynamite and another event that happened surprisingly outside of wrestling that is a follow-up and it's it's a big thing. If you guys, like, like, like they say, if you know, you know, you know. So 
Oh God! So first of all, uh, Dynamite. But one of the biggest complaints, two two complaints, was number one, horrible audio issues. Just to breathe through it, um, every scene that was not in the ring, like the little skits or whatever, horrible audio. Serena D made her surprise return, and she actually sat down and started talking. You know, just talked crap in the mic or whatever. You couldn't hear any of it. Nope, because the music was too loud or whatever. Yeah, just, and- just like that. There was a big uh, picture in picture just out of nowhere. Like, they didn't even have time. They didn't even say, you know, the usual, like, that's going to continue picture in picture. No, yeah, Tony Schiavone was still talking, I think, too, at the time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was like, boom. I was like, okay. Yeah. And then that kind of messed up, too, because they went to picture in picture or something, went straight to commercials, and then it came back. It was, it was a mess. It was like a total mess. And even yeah. going back to what's her name, um, Serena D. Yeah, Serena com- coming in there trying to talk into the cam- like the cam or whatever. The other thing is, like they said, the the announce team, the commentator team, was trying to tell us what she had said, but we didn't hear that either. So I was like, <laughs> so why is Serena here? Who? What was she doing? Wow, that's I mean, bad. So I, I, that's funny. So so they had to recap what. <laughs> The thing you're supposed to have seen was. Yeah, but you can't hear the recap. So then the big thing is that they were saying that, uh, you know, the whole thing is that the Young Bucks came in with uh, with Jack Perry with them and everything. And, you know, limos and all that. Mm-hmm. So the big thing was that, you know, like, like tonight, um, Jack Perry's going to be talking with Tony Khan in the ring and all that stuff. So everyone's going to talk about what's going to happen. He's going to be a character or not. Because Tony Khan has always said... He never wanted to be a character. He wanted to just be, you know, the guy who owns the company, whatever. So the last maybe 10 minutes of the show, what was that? He comes in. There's uh, Jack Perry. They they talk a little. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, get the hug. Yeah, yeah get, get the, the hug. hug. Yeah. Yep, big old hug. Look at the camera. Yep, Look at the camera. Like, like, you know, he's going to do something. Yeah, yeah and then, then they knock me out. Knock me out. And I was not him with the bus and knocked him out. No, when oh. Perry hit him first. Oh, yeah, Jack Perry hit him with the mic in, in the stomach. And then about five minutes later, he acted like he was shot. And, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I saw that. The young bucks I, were acting I, kind I saw of like, parts you know, of it. Like, like, oh, see, my God, did what see, did you do? You know, the, that I did kind of see that whole stupid segment where he literally just does the most love tappy touching of a mic going, I'm like, what kind of Ooh, telenovela shit was that? Oh, no, be, it wasn't even, it wasn't even telenovela. It was like Bollywood level of but like, I'm saying, it's like Street Fighter where you do the, when a person has to go very little bit of health and you just jab their, their toe and Yeah, exactly. So, um, so anyways, uh, the Young Bucks are trying to help him out, whatever, trying to act whatever, but then it's surprising, oh, no, the Young Bucks are against him, too, and they grab him into the, to possibly the safest, most, most cuddly Meltzer driver ever, and, and and you know, and attack Tony Khan, Tony Khan just stayed there dead, and dead, and, and the air shows up. And- the air coming towards his face was enough to cause him to faint. He feared for his life from the air that, that blew off of what's his face as he did the driver. Yeah. And the uh, thing I want to say before all you guys start is just how does any of that make sense in the matter of like in the chapter four? Because yes, guys, we do have our secret diving cutter podcast chat, and it's like um, okay, so CM Punk after seeing the footage now, which is a big mistake because you see back then that worked sort of because we never saw the footage, we never saw. All we could do is guess and speculate, you know. Now we saw the footage, we saw that Tony that, that, that CM Punk did nothing or anything, not, not even. You know what I mean? He did nothing to 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 cause Tony Khan to fear for his life. So so I guess CM Punk just glares in the general direction, and that's enough. Like oh shit, I fear for my life. Fire him! Fire him! Oh my god! Fire. Is, is the mean man gone? You know that kind of thing. But he gets yes, yeah. yeah, but but he gets an actual fucking Meltzer driver, which was supposed to you know pretend that it's real and all that shit. But no, yeah, see him next week, guys. Oh, the Young Bucks changed this episode about last last week. Whoa, you know, like. Yeah. Well, do you, do you want the kayfabe explanation or do you want the actual explanation? Because I have uh, I do, do, do two both. points to it. So the kayfabe it's explanation. Kayfabe so kayfabe explanation was, um, you, you know that scene. I don't know if you guys have seen Rick and Morty, where they're pulling out all the Mister Meeseeks. And they're going, oh, he wrote me into this. No, he wrote me. That's essentially what AEW Creative is doing right now. So they regretted, no one wanted to show 
the the how is that stuff anyway? Oh, pretty good. That's more of a spicy oh, okay. kind of aftertaste, you know. Yeah, someone told me it's kind of more cinnamony tasting. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So um from what I can gather, uh basically they're trying to play um I'm trying to think of the word I can use. They're kind of trying to play like uh they're they're trying to pull a wizard of oz of pay no attention to the man behind the curtain because they've already you know been caught with their pants down revealing that footage because no one wanted to reveal that footage except tony khan and he can't take the blame for it so now everyone else has to take the blame for it um so that's pretty much so in kayfabe essentially what they're doing is they're trying to go okay we can't have in a normal storyline this exact same thing Punk would come back as a villain. Jack would come back as a hero. Mm -hmm. But Punk ain't coming back. <laughs> so they already got a hero. They already got a villain, which is the Bucks. And normally they would go, oh, well, Punk, here, Perry is actually a hero. So people go, oh, he's a hero. I don't, I don't get it. This is stu stupid Tony Khan logic here. Normally they would make Perry the hero in this situation to fight the Bucks, but then they did a big swerve. So they swerved the audience into thinking he was a good guy all along, and now he's a bad guy. Didn't we trick you? And it's like, no. <laughs> no, you didn't. Like, but we did. You didn't believe us, but we did. I'm like, no, we no one believed this. You're trying to tell your kid the Easter Bunny's real when you literally were at the mall and saw the dude in the Easter Bunny outfit without his hat, without his without his mask, smoking a cigar. And you're like, he's still real, Billy. He's still real. It's like, I just saw him eating at the Wetzel's pretzels. No, no, he's still bunny. And then it's all like, Tur lied, he's not a bunny. Didn't I surprise Mr. you, Billy? Put like your mask back on. Mr. Afton, put your mask back on. <laughs> exactly. So to answer your question, it was trying to convince the audience that he's a heel. In, a nor in, in the right context, this could potentially work. Could. But here's what you do. This is what I would have done. I would have taken the same situation, I, you know, turn crap into crap sandwich, basically. What you do is you do the same thing with Perry coming out, him apologizing. Da -da -da -da. Then that would be the cue for Swerve to come out. Swerve comes out and he goes, is anyone believing this crap? Like, call it for what it is, because this only works if if you believe your fans are brain damaged, which honestly that proves the point that Khan thinks his fans are brain damaged because in this entire situation, there's no hero. There's no gain. There's no positive. It's just all negative. You're throwing oil rags in a gas fire. It doesn't make sense. That's my, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, what, what about, what about you, Will? Yeah, I pretty much got to say the same thing. I mean, I even said that the week before when we did the review, uh, when we were talking about Jack Perry, the only way that this would have worked is if he would have came back and he would have been like a hero character. And it would have been, you know, hey, you guys have been throwing me under the bus for this, that, and the other. I'm coming back for revenge against the dumb bucks. That would have been fine. That would have been in the ballpark. But to sit there and then show that video and then turn around and then make him a heel... And then go, ah, oh, look at me. I'm the new M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. Eh. No, it doesn't work at all. It just makes you look even dumber. And it makes you look, like you said, like you're telling your fans that they are stupid and they should believe this. And we don't. No one does. And you're right. If Swerve, Swerve, Osprey, Osprey. Hell, it been, yeah, it could have been Darby, Ryan Cage I know that came out injured, but does Dar anybody believe Darby's this injured, shit? But maybe you could have brought out someone as a hero out of this situation. But there's the problem is, is I, I've noticed this with Khan's booking. 
He doesn't know how to book a good guy. He never has been able to. Every time he's ever had someone get over, it says a villain. He doesn't know because his own, the only, his, and he's in, freely admitted, his favorite story lineman in wrestling was the NWO third man. And he's tried recreating that story over and over and over. Like, you know, the Hogan's the third man. But he forgets that was like the beginning of like, they just didn't know an end game for that storyline. So your favorite storyline has no end to it. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and all they did was just, oh, he's a good guy. Now he's a villain. Oh, he's a good guy. Now he's a villain. Oh, he's a good guy. Now he's a villain. That's what the NWO did. And that's all AEW's done. That's all they've done is good, bad, good, bad, good. There's no heroes in AEW. There's not a single good hero in AEW. Now that you mention that, that might explain what's going on with Swerve right now. Because they're trying to turn, you know, they're trying to do a, a turn to Swerve baby face, but it seems like maybe they don't know what to fully do with them right, right now. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't like what they right. do with them but, without a baby face. But the problem is, the problem is you can't, you you failed at turning Swerve babyface when you had him breaking into someone's house over a crib and then cutting someone's throat and drinking his blood. Kind of not as good guy as you can make him anymore. You kind of threw that out the window. Oh, oh, Anti-hero oh. Anti-hero oh. at best. Okay. Now, I would say, don't get about the, the fact that, uh, what was the other thing that he, oh, when he beat, beat up Nick Wayne on camera, <laughs> showing it off. You know, at, at the little compound where, where Darby Allen and them were or whatever, yeah. he, he beat up Nick Wayne. And he's like, here, call him. It yeah. was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, like, not, not to, to put it as a parallel, uh, but to put it as a parallel to WWE. Okay. Cody only got over as a baby face because Roman was such a monster heel. You need the contract. <laughs> you need the parallel. If you don't, you need a Batman for the Joker. You need a... Um, you need uh, like all these. You need a hero to fight the villain. If there's just villains, that's that's a boring story, and it's as simple as that. It's boring. Even right now with the whole swerve thing, like I say, he is trying to turn. I mean, obviously, he's trying to make him like you know something. But it's like, who can they really put up against him to have a good setup and storyline with him? We already know Osprey's going to go up against him, but then again, now, because of how they treated him on Wednesday, it does feel like, hey, keep the belt warm for where uh, so that Osprey can get it later. I, I mean, I would say the only person, the only two people in their company I could honestly see getting ever over as a top baby face would be Hook, which is kind of a stretch, or Will Ospreay, but it's still too early for Will Ospreay. And Hook, I'm like 90% sure from what a lot of sources are saying, he's out the door. Like, he doesn't want to be there anymore. He wants to go to NXT. Like, they're offering him a lot of money to go to NXT. Man, I've been saying that for a while. I said he probably do good at NXT. I mean, he just looks like he's suited for NXT. I was saying that a while ago. Now, one thing I do want to yeah. say, though, is that the only way they could possibly salvage because what's done is done. We can talk to what ifs, but they already did what they did, is um, they're, for any kind of credibility at all, for K-Pop or whatever, they got to have Tony Khan fire them, fire them, and then have, like, the Young Bucks and them just, you know, do the deal where they just completely, they just barge it anyways, they have extra security, we have the whole thing where they're banned from the building, but they yeah. still get it anyways, you know, that kind of junk, but they got to do something. Yeah. They just can't have them... Show up and do promos next week that like nothing happened, you know? If you guys go, if if anyone listening goes back into the archives of when Khan came out and said that he threatened his life and na 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 na, I said back then, that's bullshit. That didn't happen. Punk would never do that. And this is going to, he's going to regret this later. Am I wrong? No. But no. the point of it is, no, what they have, <laughs> this is the thing. With showing the punk footage, you had two choices. Either go in a different direction, which would have been the right call, or like drop it, go in a different direction, or 
double and triple down, which is what he chose. And we are where we are. And literally everyone is saying, as a lot of people are saying, I'm like, someone said it. I remember there's an old quote that goes, chaos uncontrolled is the most dangerous because chaos uncontrolled cannot be predicted. And that's the same principle with Khan. He's like, he's pointing the finger at everyone to blame when it's him. It's all him. It's always been him. It's like, it's like, you're the ultimate. It's the same thing with Vince. He is Vince. I don't care what anyone says. He's essentially Vince as far as booking, not personal, but yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um, Johnny, since you came in kind of late, uh, what are your thoughts? We're just on just the first part now, just part one of this. What are your thoughts on the whole Tony Khan, like, you know, being on TV, being attacked by the Young Bucks, like actually being kind of a character on the show now? Like, what are your thoughts of that? Okay, what do I think about the whole incident? Just that first part, yeah. thing. Huh? Just that yeah, the whole incident with the Young Bucks. Well, yeah. what they're doing, foul driving. Okay, first of all, yeah. horrible acting. I don't think nobody's convinced that's 100% real. It's totally fake. It looks, it just looks horrible. But the whole time, and this is this is going to be my train of thought for the for the duration of this thing, and I'm going to be certain that nothing's going to happen. When that whole incident happened. There's a lot of things that came into my mind because I'm kind of rewinding myself a little bit way back when the whole punk, you know, behind the scenes locker room incident happened and how Tony Kami is such a big deal that I'm afraid of for my life. And he did this whole thing where, you know, he fired CM Punk and he suspended, um, you know, Jungle Brat. So when Joe Brad did that whole thing with the with the young bugs, I was thinking, that's your boy? That's the guy you prefer to just suspend him and not fire him? Because I don't care how uh, confrontational CM Punk might be sometimes. You know, he might be very uh what? outspoken, but he would never have done what jungle brat and and um his favorites the young bucks you know they wouldn't have never have see i'm would have never have done what they have done to see it to uh tony khan so he definitely been double crossed like big time when this whole thing happened but the thing that i can't stop thinking about is like okay tony khan so you made such a big deal of your safety, the reason why you thought it was the appropriate course of action to fire CM Punk. Okay, so after you got injured by the Young Bucks and um, Jungle Boy, and your neck is being all fractured, and you have that, what's it called, that thing that you put around? Neck brace. Neck brace, but we'll get to that part later. Yeah. You, right now, are literally, you know, of course this is fake, but still, if you were to believe this was true, just for the sake of the storyline, okay, are you telling me, you thinking, oh, I'm afraid of my life, blah, 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 has any comparison to you actually having to go to the hospital to get that thing in your neck and, and and being injured for a long time because you know that that shit's gonna take a, lo- a long time to recover to you know to recuperate. Do you think there's any comparison between those two actions? I think what's happening now is way worse than you thinking. Oh, I'm afraid for my life. Blah 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 blah. I'm gonna fire CM Punk because I'm scared for my life. Okay, and. The thing that really is going to get me is that if, if Tony Khan doesn't fire the Young Bucks 
and Jungle and Jungle Boy. I I honestly don't know what to think about him. To be honest, I don't know what to think about him. I don't know what what to think about AEW at that point. I mean, I'm still gonna watch AEW, but I'm still gonna kind of like my expectations will be a lot lower because come on now, like what the hell are you doing? And I don't know if you guys have talked about it, but you know, there's more, there's more controversy behind it because then yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get there when we get there, Johnny. We'll we'll get there, 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 but I'm like, but he just opened another can of worms that he, he did not need to open. So this whole thing is just, it's just horrible. But, but, Going back to the to the train of thought that I have, I still think that Tony Khan should fire the Young Bucks and Jungle Boy, and he's not going to do it. He's probably not going to do it, even yeah, though he fired too scared uh, for his life to fire them. He's too scared for his life to fire them because what they might put another air uh, air uh, air um, centered um, TK driver on him again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this whole thing. Before we move on to the big one, any other? Like, uh, I did have one quick. Project? Uh, I, I did have. I, I, I was even thinking about this the other day with this whole thing. Uh, you know, just replaying the whole situation with the. Da, da, da. I almost think I know where he's going as far as storyline, and I think what he's trying to do is essentially turn the corporate elite into. A combination of the authority storyline from WWE Mm -hmm. and evolution. But again, back to that point, those storylines only work with a hero. They don't work if there's no hero. And... It might be... Well, I was thinking maybe what they're they're trying to go is like maybe it's going to be like... You know, like having a little factions there. You know, you're gonna have like, you know, Okada, the Bucks, and um, Jungle Jack, whatever him. And then on the other team, since Kenny Omega's supposed to be coming back, you have Kenny Omega. You'll have maybe FTR, and um, you know, someone else, and you know, to go up against them with Tony Khan's blessing, because he fears for his life to do anything himself. God forbid he'd be a boss. Well, yeah, that would be about the only saving grace would be on which on where Kenny Omega lies when he comes back. Um, I mean, I think mean, about it. Think about it right think now. They're it, top. They're they're top babyface right now. Is, is Adam Copeland? It's Adam. Copeland. It's Adam Copeland. That, that's the saddest thing. I'm like, really, really? Yeah. That's your top? Mm-hmm. A guy who already flouts it. Um, I think about maybe last maybe another year or two. I'm like, wait, what the what the? F-? <laughs> See now, the reason why I say uh, Kenny Omega is, and he didn't do this on purpose. It was just literally him talking on Twitch. But you know, they asked him if there was any issue with him and Punk, and he said, no, me and Punk are completely fine. Had some other people not been in the room, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I don't think any of this would have happened. Which it literally wouldn't have happened considering he wasn't the one that opened his mouth and sounded like a bunch of effing children by someone else. So I think they're going to use that quote uh, that he said while he was on his Twitch stream as a turning point or a catch point to make it look like, okay, well, Kenny's not riding with us, so obviously he's against us, which will turn him into the unlikely hero upon his return. Now, if he comes back with the FTR or something, who knows? I mean, heck, for all we know, the whole Don Callis thing might fall apart, and ooh, it might be a team of him and Osprey, and maybe Tanahashi. Yeah, because we've already seen that uh, Callis is starting to act, uh, trying to treat old Osprey like crap, so. They yeah, already sure. started to play that angle where you both kind of don't like being part of Cast Family anymore, like that much. So like, that might be a good way to do it too. AEW's got one story and one story over. 
they're like a cover band that only knows one song and that song is we're bad guys until we're bad guys until we're bad guys until like that's their whole i'm like you guys suck (laughs) at writing because man how do you because look at it right now i was just thinking about this so you have characters that are established in the company who are monster heels and have the odds stacked against them in a group where have we heard that before <laughs> maybe with the jericho appreciation society maybe with whatever stupid faction mjf had whatever um what the hell's the the dark order before they became stupid and then yeah. uh what was the other there were there was there was um well, the house of black house of black there's uh yeah there's house of black there's uh now the kingdom which it's funny i'm like you created this faction now you don't know what to do with it because your top guy you could have them Ooh, we're gonna destroy your world oh what he's off tv uh evil <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what they did they literally went we yeah, have this evil move. faction sent to destroy mjf what's that he's leaving tv um now the evil elite are gonna <laughs> that's literally what they did that's literally what they did and now they're like oh oh, oh. and now and now mr moxley he's got a belt that makes him scary Wow, no, he's just a wow. And the crowd goes, eh. And the crowd goes, eh. <laughs> no, that love- just ensures that they need to put microban all over the title whenever it gets the hands get changed to it. Because God knows you probably get tetanus from touching it. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh. I literally oh, said that. I they made that joke during Windy City Riot, because when he beat Naito. Chris Charlton made that comment. He goes, oh, it must be a day that ends in Y. And he goes, what makes you say that? He's like, because John Moxley's bleeding. <laughs> oh, DJ. I'm like, wow. <laughs> D- DJ, what? I forgot where he heard this little theory or whatever. They say, what if the joke is that, um, you know, with the whole Bucks, you know, hurting Tony and all that stuff. That what if it's a storyline where his father um, hired the elite you now to tag Tony because he gets sick of him losing good talent and making stupid choices and decisions to keep him as an open ATM to keep you know keep things going. And I know it's crazy, but I kind of like the idea of that because it's something. And you know, like you cost me Cody, you cost me Jay Cargill, you cost me CM Punk. The fuck are you doing? You know? I love, I love that one joke someone said. It said, uh, there's an old adage in wrestling that goes, you give blood, sweat, and tears in this industry, and John Moxley stopped listening after blood. <laughs> <laughs> I gave blood, blood, and blood to this industry. <laughs> it's like, what about the sweat and tears? What? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to the big thing that happened the very next day. That is outside the realm of wrestling, but still, where uh, Tony Khan was at the NFL draft, and to his credit, he was wearing the neck brace to kind of sell it. You, which, in my opinion, is kind of a it's kind of a lose lose. You know, like he can't just beat her without it because it looks he, like we know wrestling's fake, but let's not like shot it to the rooftops or whatever. Yeah. But on the other side, it's like. When we have the neck brace, it's like, well, it looks stupid too. So, so it's like a lose lose, you know. It's like, like he was damn if you do, damn if you don't. I'm hearing people complaining about the neck, I, neck brace. I think then, it would be better if he just. Well, hold on. I, I was there. hearing on social media, they were asking questions about like when he go to the NFL draft, will he have the neck brace? Will he be stupid enough to just go like 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 nothing happened? Hey, you know. So they're already insulting him before he did or didn't. Then he does come with the with the neck break. They're making fun of him anyways because he's stupid and whatever. You know what I mean? He's Tony Khan. He won't get made fun of it. The quarterback, yeah. the the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars says, "Wow, I feel real bad for when I saw." He literally actually said that he's like, "Man, when I saw Tony's neck, man, I just I just pray for him and his family. 
I think I'm like, you paid your quarterback to give in to this shit. <laughs> hey, okay, hey, so, hey, um, hey, you can pay me as much as you want. I say whatever you want. If you pay me, oh, so, 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 so I have. I have the full text written down. Yeah, you thank you. Repeat? I was going to say that Tony Khan has something very interesting to say during the interview. And if, if Jeff would be okay. so kind as to quote word for word what he said, and then you guys can go on your thoughts on <laughs> like what y'all are going to say. Yes. Uh, I have the transcript. Give me a few seconds, folks. I'm just making sure I have it all in writing. Um. I'll, I'll try my best not to make a pipsqueak sounding voice, but I'll try. No promises. I'm sorry that I have a manlier voice than Tony Khan. I apologize. Tony Khan <laughs> has a manlier voice than Tony Khan. Everybody does. Riho has a manlier voice than Tony Khan. Oh, you know he really fears for his life when she shows up. <laughs> Fucking Marco Stunt has a manlier voice than Tony Khan. Oof. <laughs> I, I, hell, Hornswoggle has a man here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, okay. I don't know. Just, okay. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, so Tony Khan was on uh, the NFL, pre-NFL draft. So basically it was like the setup for the NFL draft on ESPN as well as ESPN2. It's simulcasted. Um, <clears throat> so they had Tony Khan on the brace. Uh, the two correspondents, I totally spaced on their name. Uh, they're basically in charge of keeping track of the draft. Um, they said, uh, oh, so uh, how, how did the uh, neck brace uh, come about um, to, to, to go on? I heard you got injured during your uh, your taping of your recent show. And then um, he goes, uh, Matt and Nick, uh, Matt and Nick pulled me in to do a Tony Khan driver in front of millions of fans. Millions of fans. Okay. <laughs> The, millions of fans uh, there and around the world. Uh, to, uh, but in reality, there was only uh, about 2,000 people in attendance, and only uh, l- they had the lowest rating since 2001 or 2021 with over 700,000, barely over 700,000. That's a side note. Sorry. <clears throat> Wednesday night on TBS, uh, he they pulled me in. Uh, they did a Tony Khan driver on me. And uh, it scared me. It scared my family. And I'm just, uh, I'm glad I'm here in the NFL draft. And the correspondent goes, yeah, his father actually came in the ring. Yeah, my father's a big fan of AEW. He watches every show and he never expected something like that. It's it's never happened before. You know, uh, AEW, we've been uh, doing this for five years. Most successful sports startup since the AFL merger. Uh, there's not been uh, much traction as AEW. In many, many years, uh, in many, many years, we are uh, the Pepsi of pro wrestling, and we're up against a really evil juggernaut. Uh, WWE is our competitor. That's who we're facing. AEW, like the Pepsi of professional wrestling. WWE is like the Harvey Weinstein of pro wrestling. Um, And then the news anchors uh, laugh extremely awkwardly, and then uh, that's where uh, the it cuts out. They go, okay, Tony, we'll talk to you later. And then that's Absolutely. pretty much what happened. I'm sorry. What so... I don't understand. What I don't understand is how you get Weinstein as a comparison to Pepsi when we already have that. It's called Coca-Cola. He should have said, they're the Coca-Cola, we're the Pepsi. You know, yeah, but remember but Tony Khan. Sense. Tony Khan can't say anything bad about Coke. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I, I got so many opinions about this, but uh, I'm gonna leave it up. I'm gonna let you guys go first. Now that I've fully read the quote and digest it, I want to hear what you guys think first. Okay. Let's think. You want to go first? Is there a if I go first? Yeah, go first. Yeah, I just, oh, I'm sorry. I just, for one thing, I think this is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. I mean, just because they have an issue with one, with a couple of people in particular, or three, um, in particular at WWE that is involved in such lewd acts and stuff, 
doesn't mean the company as a whole is. I mean, <laughs> seriously, he's throwing the whole, he's trying to say the whole company are a bunch of wine scenes. You know, they do bad things and, you know, with you know, all that junk that I don't want to really say, but I, I just don't understand how that came to his mind. It's that that's that's what's throwing me with this. And that's just a dumb thing to say because that's probably when I, okay, you probably you probably have people that are fans of both WWE and AEW and TNA, you know, all of them. But I'm pretty sure he's gonna be alienating a lot of WWE fans from you know, you know, watching AEW. Unless this fool is trying to make himself seem like such a heel to and he is gonna be like a um an on-screen character and he's trying to make people hate him. Even though I couldn't see that because he's such a wimp. So um I, I just don't know. My man is just it's just of all the things compared to why did you just say I don't know Sonny D with I don't know Tang I don't know just it doesn't make sense those are just two digits like apples and oranges you know it's never mad that not even, okay it's like comparing potato chips to apples I mean it's just not even in the same category so I just don't understand what made him decide to say that. And and my other issue is that he needs to stop trying to compete with WWE and just focus on his business and whatever happens, happens. That's the other problem with him. He's always, it's like W it's like it's like rent free in his head, like, oh, I gotta one up WWE all the time. And it's just I don't know. It's like, what did WWE do to him? Did he pick his puppy? Did they throw him down a flight of stairs? Did that did that pile driver mess up that little bit of a brain or he didn't have it to begin with? Is he probably going off the deep end? Or, like DJS said, maybe his father was having him attacked on purpose and this is all a storyline. And after this, if he, if his father had someone go after him, I really wouldn't blame him. I don't know, man. This is just nuts. That's all I got to say. The dude ain't right. I'm thinking maybe the it's the KP concussion that's talking. But honestly speaking, yeah, that, that is very risky. It's a big thing to say. And the big thing to awesome. say, uh, number one, it would have been, it's still bad to say on his own show, but he's in a show where you could get away all dressing, all skate, they're taking pop shots. But on yeah. NFL, that outside of all that, it's more of a you know real life thing, and then now everyone watching is a wrestling fan, that kind of stuff. But you know it's, uh, that now everyone's a wrestling fan, but everyone knows what WWE is. You know it's a big thing. Yeah. Even if you don't care about it or think wrestling's dumb or whatever, everyone knows what WWE is. So that's a very big, bold accusation to say the, the Harvey Weinstein was with, with WWE. And the biggest irony too is that. I mean, I know you could kind of say because, you know, Vince McMahon and, hey, girls, it's such good shit and all that stuff. But the thing, sorry, children. But the thing is that he's gone now, you know? You maybe go by that route. The joke is old because he's gone now. They got rid of him. And, in fact, um, recently they announced that Vince actually sold the last of his WWE shares. So he's yeah. 100% completely yeah. not and with the company anymore. So so that even if, if, if Yeah, and it wasn't just – it wasn't all, also a little bit of an update to that – it wasn't just Vince who sold all his shares. It's Nick Khan, the guy who brought him back the second time. So both of them are completely gone from TKO. So literally, like, there's no like ties back to Vince at all, yeah. really. And like Jack will, I'm sure he'll elaborate when it's his turn. He was saying, I mean, like you kind of take it like a shot at Vince in general and WWE, whatever, but, but he made it sound like WWE as a whole, like everyone involved in WWE, you know, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I'll let you guys go more to the deeper things of that could potentially be a, a lawsuit and stuff, and yeah. we'll see what Triple H does. Although a lot of people are saying the smart thing they could do is just let it slide because they're dealing with stuff too. So, you know, but I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out next week or so. Yeah, and also what you just said about, uh, you know, like, that's like someone from WWE taking a shot at um. AEW because they're promoting all the Ric Flair stuff and we already know about Ric Flair's you know situations you yeah. know that he was on the airplane he was flashing his whole way at, at that lady there I mean not even just that just you know he has a history of some uncouth things himself but you know he's hanging around with his woo energy which 
Root for his wooing, then who boy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Johnny, how about you go? How about you go next, yeah. Johnny? Oh boy. Okay, so so you know, of course at first, you know, it's like okay, Tony Khan is talking smack on on, 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 on his competitor on WWE. So at first I was like, okay, whatever, like, you know, whatever. But once he mentioned the the Harvey Weinstein thing, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like did he actually did he actually said that he actually said that. That he actually said that name on an ESPN show that you know I was part I'm pretty sure it was filmed live at the moment. Yeah, no yeah, wonder yeah, it was. Can't take it back. People are talking about like, like like okay, so from that angle, from the ESPN angle or NFL angle, that has to be so embarrassing. They said something so um, controversial like that on, on a live television show. I mean, and you know, we're not going to pretend that every organization is perfect because I'm pretty sure NFL has things, half skeleton in their closets. Um, AEW is not perfect either. They have a whole bunch of shit going on behind closed doors in the AEW. You know, beyond the CM Punk situation and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure there's more to it than what we know publicly, right? So there's probably a lot of shit that we don't know about AEW Mm -hmm. that it's so easy for, like, if WWE found out about what AEW does behind closed doors, it'd be so easy for them to slandered of AEW that way. Okay, now let's not pretend that, you know, WWE doesn't have their controversy. They don't have this. You know, let's not get into too much detail for that, but we all know that he, you know, did things he shouldn't have done, and that's the reason why he's no longer with the company. But this is this is another problem with Tony Khan. He just loves, he just seems to love opening old wounds. He can't let things go. This is like that CM Punk situation that CM Punk's no longer with AEW, but by showing that footage, oh, now we got to remember, you know, CM Punk, I guess, right? So now him, by mentioning the mm-hmm, of the WWE, now everybody's yeah. having flashback. Oh, shit. Now, now, now everybody has to be thinking about, oh, the controversy, you know, events and the all that kind of stuff. Like, let it go. Like WWE's in a different course right now, okay? And AEW doesn't have CM Punk anymore, okay? Like these things already happened. They passed. But Tony Khan seemed to love to just bring back old wounds again. But another thing also, like pretty much like what you guys say, is like, okay, just because WWE has somebody that has done horrific things, that I don't even want to mention. Um, that doesn't mean the entire company is like that. It doesn't mean every wrestler is like that. So you're really doing this whole, I don't know what they would call it, like defam- defamation of character. You're slandering the entire company for one the person that yeah. done horrible shit in the company. Yeah. Okay, like that. That's just pretty messed up. And then again, like just him mentioning that name. Are you out of your mind that you're mentioning that name with, you know, a big company like like the NFL, ESPN, like these are companies that have million dollar contracts. Okay, they have a lot of sponsors and they have all that stuff going on. You're by mentioning what he did, I think a lot of public relations might not want to do deals with AEW because AEW right now is not looking that good either. Like he oh, just WB. I, I heard the WB deal went out the table after the ESPN controversy. That's the room. Yeah. So definitely Tony Khan it was definitely not thinking. I think he did got hit too hard in the head. I think he did got too injured in the neck with that with the injury because he's definitely uh, not thinking 
straight like like at all like th this is serious stuff going on and, and again a lot of business deals are gonna yeah they're not i don't think a lot of people they're not gonna want to do business with AEW because of that because he just made his company look a million times worse than, than it already is and um i don't know what else to say my my mind is kind of uh all over the place but it's obviously just it's just horrible what he said and it's so out of character so i mean it's so out of place and another thing oh another thing i also want to mention is that can i think aew would have more respect if aew would be much more if a lot of fans would respect aew a lot better if AEW would stop having to try to compare versus a of uh, WWE all the time, like instead, yeah. you know, like what Wendy says, except of them having this feud, like it's like the so-called competition. Because I don't think WWE, they're not, you know, they're they're probably laughing their ass off on on AEW at this point. Right. Uh, yeah. They're not really competition, but I think both companies can coexist. Okay, like AEW have their thing going on, WWE have their thing going on. Both companies have pros and cons. Let the fans decide, hey, I want to watch WWE or I want to watch AEW or I want to watch independent wrestling. Let the fans decide which wrestling program they want to watch. And there's people that love it all, you know, there's people that yeah. love all all wrestling, you know, Lucha Libre, AEW, um, WWE, Japan Pro yeah. Wrestling, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Started them. Yeah, there's so much. That's that's the one thing I love about this current age of wrestling is there's so much variety. But the problem is, is you look at like, uh, you know, it's kind of a bit of a tangent, but you look at a good example, TNA Pro Wrestling. Okay, TNA what i love about tna is that all they've ever focused on is just putting out a good show and that's it that's that's all it is and you know what I'll, I'll, sometimes i will say this sometimes they've been better than wwe just on like the actual content itself just like how if you go on youtube you'll see these youtube channels that are like multi-million views and their content sucks but then you see these view these contents, you see these channels that have like maybe a little over a couple hundred views, and you're like, wow, these guys are really good. And yeah, that's like the Video Game Master's it's, own it's, channel, the Jack Knives channel. Yeah, like Video Gaster. Exactly. Like my channel or Mark's channel. I'm kidding. But my point of it is, is like it's the quality, not the quality. Channel, and and that's the like a video per year. Yeah. <laughs> but the point of it is, is that they focused more on the content rather than the qu the quantity of it. and when you everyone has said this to, to tony khan since day one don't chase the numbers don't if you chase the numbers you're going to fall by the wayside like everyone else who's ever done it and what did he do remember when uh aew quote unquote destroyed nxt even though NXT has already proven it's fundamental and Khan and the Bucks and all of them did a victory screech and we're like about it. And then I was like, who cares? Literally, even Triple H goes, congrats. You beat our developmental for a week or two. Yay. Like Even he was just like, okay. Like he didn't care. But Khan's like, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? I'm like, okay. Like that's, um, Hunter just recently did a, did a, it was a video that resurfaced. Um, it was like a couple months ago where Hunter was talking to Ariel, uh, Ariel Hawani, and he was just talking about, like they said, like, what is your on? Uh, I was kind of curious what your honest opinion of AEW as a company is. He's like, well, I'm a, I, he's like, uh, I'm not going to lie. I really don't watch that much of it. And it's not anything to do with the quantity or quality of the company. It's just, I just have so much stuff to do here. Um, he's like, there was a time where I would watch everything. He's like, I will watch things from Japan, Mexico, China, everything, but I just don't have the time now. Uh, there are points, but he's like, I have other people do that for me. And if something's worth value, they'll bring it to my attention. I'll make note of it. Um, I hear they reference this a lot. 
I hear they, you know, criticize us a lot. And you know what? That's fair. You know, if you want to do that, that's okay. You're entitled to do that. I don't hate anyone who likes their stuff. I don't hate anyone who likes our stuff over their stuff or whatever. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we all, you know, we all like what happens in the ring. We're all entertainers. We're all having fun. And that should be the number one priority. And I'm like, that is a proper response. He just said, okay. Okay. Like, I was like, I don't really watch it, but okay. I'm like, that's how you respond as an owner. You don't, you don't shit on your competition. You acknowledge them and go, okay, cool. But Khan has this imaginary heroin dragon of fighting WWE, and I don't understand it. Oh, can I also add something else? And everything that's really pathetic about this segment that he said on that and that uh, ESPN show, other than the fact that he mentioned the name, is that I feel like he wants to be a victim so bad because he really wants to make it sound like AEW. I'm sorry, like WWE. Is after AEW, like if WWE is like on a big witch hunt against AEW, it's like like you know WWE is like this evil juggernaut that's tri- that's you know fighting against us, and it's like, dude, calm down. Like okay, like it's everybody knows that you guys are competition. It it's but- very much it's it's a literal literally it is exactly that scene. From Avengers Endgame, where she's like, "You've taken everything from me." He's like, "I don't even know you." And then, like, that's literally, that's literally Tony Khan. That's oh, like, literally Tony Khan, the Hunter. He's like, "You've taken everything." And then and Triple H is like, "That." I was like, "I don't even know you." And then, yeah, that's, that's exactly that's like that's like the WWE is probably like, I bet even they're thinking, "Do like chill down, like chill out." Like when I even like. Like, okay, like, like, you know, you guys have your thing. We have our thing. Like, they're not really, I don't see a, I don't see WWE aggressively trying to attack AEW. Like, Tony Khan makes it sound like, like they're like on such a, I don't know. It's just like, what, what the, what's going on, Tony Khan? The reason, the reason a company like Ring of Honor lasted so long and tna has been the phoenix of wrestling it's never died is because they flat out have admitted from day one they've never hide it hit it they've never denied it they've always said we are the alternative good be it have at it but con has from day one wanted to be no we're better we're gonna take over we're gonna i'm like you were doomed from the start, man. You just, you, <laughs> you dove head first in the pool without looking if it had water in it. And you're just been like, oh, how could AW, how could WWE have taken the water away? It's like WWE is like four states away. Like what? <laughs> now, the only reason why I think Tony Khan probably has said now that I'm trying to look at another angle behind why he said that. But I think the other reason why he might say that the WWE is like the juggernaut against AEW is because um I don't know because WWE does have Cody Rhodes and Jay Cargill and I forgot what other AEW talents that they had and now they're with the you know competition with the juggernaut huh yeah but if you want to go by that route 90% of fucking AEW is WWE (laughs) oh yeah exactly well I don't know what to say to, about Tony. I, I love I love how now he's trying to backpedal him and Dave Meltzer. Like I don't understand why these fans are so tribalist about. I'm like you, you're the reason you started it. <laughs> I don't know why they keep what. I don't know. He needs. He needs. A, he needs. A... He needs some milk. No, I'm good. Anyway, public relations um, for, yeah. Oh, I can still see the bar. Nin- a ninja. I want to hear what you think. Not to hear what you know, think, ninja. He needs a public relations uh, person that can handle Tony Khan. Tell him what he's supposed to say and not say on television. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he needs, needs a guy. He needs to hire. No, you know what he needs to hire. He needs to hire a guy from the New Japan Dojo 
with a kendo stick to just go Wah! every time he's like well i'm thinking about doing it and just, Wah! And just like smack him like <laughs> treat him like a young boy well, before uh, before Jack goes on the full on rant, uh, what does William think? We'll save Jack best for last. Okay, let me get started by saying when CM Punk did that uh, uh, Mia scrum where he ended saying, "I'm dealing with a bunch of fucking children," I didn't think he was actually talking about Tony Tom, uh, Tony Khan, but yet here we are. Like, all right, I get the neck brace is a damned if you don't, damned if you do situation. Because, okay, this happened on your wrestling gig, you're on an NFL show, you want to play kayfabe, okay, that's fine and good. If you didn't, that would also have been fine and good. But to sit there and blame a whole company, not just one or two people, a whole company and call them a complete Harvey Weinstein, that's just fucking dumb. Why the fuck would you even do that? Not to mention, I mean... Let's face it, both companies have had stuff behind the scenes that have gone on that have kind of put a black eye on the market of wrestling, whether it been those type of allegations or even meltdowns in the locker room, full-on fights in the locker room, you know, stuff that he had. So while he wants to call them the Harvey Weinsteins, we can call them the jailbreak of wrestling because it's, it's just like a prison riot back then. But... I digress. I'm going to let that part go. You also want to sit there and talk shit on a wrestling company on an NFL draft show, a completely different sport, which means not only are you dumb enough and such a man child that you're shooting yourself in the foot, your father let you go on that show to give you a chance and represent the football team That's in that NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars, which means not only did you shoot yourself in the foot and make you look like a man child for your company, but you made yourself look bad for your dad's company, the actual football company, you know, the one that makes the money so that you get the money so that you can run this wrestling promotion. Mm -hmm. That's fucking horrible. And if sponsors start leaving AEW and seeing this on ESPN, other sponsors that are connected to it, that are connected to the Jacksonville Jaguars, may actually start start leaving too. So you shot yourself in the foot not once, but twice in the same call. And you want to sit there and talk about competition? Here's the one thing about competition. When AEW first started, the reason that made it so fresh and new and made it look so different was the fact of it was different. They weren't trying to compete with WWE. They were doing their own fucking thing, and whatever cards fell as far as WWE went, that was their concern. If they would keep that fucking pace and not worry about what WWE is doing so much, they had been doing just fine in the rings now. We wouldn't be having this conversation, and none of this would be happening. But no, Tony Khan literally became the monster that he thought his other com- that the other company was. And now he looks like a fucking idiot. Plain and simple, just a goddamn idiot. And I wish that they would actually put a Meltzer driver on him rather than just, you know, slightly cradling a baby doing a DDT with what they did to him that night. Because maybe it would have knocked some freaking sense into him. I am so freaking irritated with Tony Khan. They don't even need to, like, get a kindle stick or a guy to advise him. No. Anytime that there's a press conference, they need to have a full-on different representative and lock him in the fucking back room and tell him, don't come out till this show is fucking over. Well, you need to think put him in his room. Um, sponsor the team. Put him in his room. Give him a box of cheeses. He'll be fine. Yeah, that's right. Tony's grounded. <laughs> Well, it's interesting that you brought up sponsors. I didn't even think about that. That probably would possibly run sponsors off because, you know, it's a really negative. I mean, it's a really negative representation of your company and making your father's company look bad. So, yeah, I could definitely see some sponsors pulling out, you know, and then have to be screwing his, his, um, you know, his deal that he already has, like, you know, to show his stuff on TNT and TBS. And, yeah, because... I'm still surprised they had sponsors at this point. Oh, oh yeah. So now we've got, and I see he's got his belt ready. We got the the uh, diving cutter ranked champion. 
is here to give his thoughts. Um, so, okay. Where do I, where do I even begin with this shit? Oh, first God. of all, first of all, it, it, you shot yourself. You, you marked so hard. You shot yourself. And it's, it's literally that old saying, like you, you mark, you marked so hard, you turned it into a shoot. That is con in a nutshell. He marked himself into a shoot. I'm like, man, hey, you fucking idiot. Um, the other issue, the, okay, so from the beginning, from the get-go, one of my favorite parts is uh, during the uh, setup for the NFL draft, because uh, my roommate was really into football, he was watching it, <laughs> Tony Codd's dumbass is wearing this neck brace, which I'm like, okay, fine. But there was a segment where they had Pat McAfee on his Pat McAfee show for the NFL draft. He was there and a bunch of other people. One of the ESPN correspondents pointed out, they go, hey, uh, someone should tell uh, Tony Khan if he uh, wants to keep the kayfabe alive, he probably shouldn't turn his head with a neck brace because he literally cut to him and cut to him with a neck brace and he was going like this. And (laughs) I'm like, wow, the ESPN guys called out how stupid this is. (laughs) Anyway, anyway, that's a side note, which made me laugh so hard. I'm like, I had to pop that tension. Second of all, regarding the comments he made, I I truly believe Khan is like the epitome of the Tower of Babel, and he doesn't understand how I could never fall down. I'm like, no. You're the one making yourself fall. No one else. You're in free fall and cutting your own parachute. And you're like, curse you, WWE. I'm like, you're doing it, dude. You're doing it. How could you compare yourself to Pepsi, first of all? Pepsi is a gigantic chain. Pepsi is... is, universally beloved you're not even known outside of the u.s pepsi (laughs) is also the sponsor of the jacksonville jaguars the only people who know who aew are are by proxy of other companies they don't know them by hand they don't know any of them by hand i have uh, aew has never done a show outside of the u.s no they've barely done a show outside of the east coast um on top of that The funniest thing about it is, is you have a guy who's clearly so obsessed to to the point where it's his obsession is comical. It's it's comical at this point how dumb he is. His dad, on the other hand, is a brilliant man. Do you know how Shad, Shad Khan actually became a multi-billionaire. He started and uh, he bought out for 770 million the major distribution plant for all car parts in the in in and outside of the United States. He bought the manufacturing plants and that's what made him a multi-billionaire. So he goes, I'm going to save up my money. I'm going to figure out my finances. I'm going to invest in car parts when everyone told him it was a dumb idea and he kept investing proper. And then he ended up going from 770 million to $12 billion. And I'm like, I'm like, how is it? You can't even listen to your own father. And you think that, you know, more than everyone. <laughs> like his dad's just like, I'm having fun. I don't care. Look at my twirly mustache, <laughs> which Kudos to his dad. Fucking bitchin' mustache. I gotta give him kudos on that. Anyway, back to the comments themselves. How can you compare yourself to Pepsi and another company to Harvey Weinstein when you look just at the Young Bucks? Okay. Just the Young Bucks have had three known associates who were sex offenders. And one of them they still keep in contact with, Marty Skrull. And that's from Marty Skrull. He said, oh, yeah, I still talk to them all the time. 
Really? You have <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. Cutting them out of the point. Cutting cutting just the Bucks out of the point. You have Chris Jericho, known backstage politician and constant fist fighter backstage. You have Ric Flair, who we all know is a massive, Ooh. massive creep. Uh, you have Sammy Guevara, also oh, massive wow. creep and overall piece of shit. You have, uh, let's see, who else is also a creepo? Um, well, Darby Allen had those alleged allegations. Yeah, there's that. Um, and it seems like not only that, you Mike also seem to have you, this I know there, I guess. Yeah, you have this notion that you somehow have no problem with. Oh, I mean, we could chalk this up to the many lies that Tony Khan says about how isn't it that they're the safest wrestling organization on the planet? Hmm. Funny how that works. What about how they're the most financially viable wrestling company on the planet? Hmm. No, can't say that one either. What about the fact that they're the most honest wrestling? Nope. Uh, best track record? Nope. Ratings? Nope. Uh, overall performance? Nope. Hmm. So really, they're the only thing that they're the best at is being marks for themselves. Which, if that is kudos, if if that if that is the measure of a wrestling company, let's give Tony Khan a round of applause. You are in the same league as Juggalo Championship Wrestling. So, to also just as a comment section, think of how stupid that phrase is. Comparing. <laughs> one comp your own company to a food and then another to a sex offender that would be like me and mark going i going mark i'm the beef bourguignon of pro wrestling whereas you are the jean-luc picard of pro wrestling and you're like what <laughs> it would make that much sense as just the semantics level you're like what I <laughs> like i have it's like what huh? <laughs> <laughs> I I'm the it's like I am the uh oh God I'm trying to think who I could I, I it's it doesn't even make I don't see the A to Z that's the dumb thing about it, it, it and also it, it doesn't make sense from a semantic point of view yeah and 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 the other thing of it is this is the biggest issue just like the con just like the punk statement. He's only digging himself a deeper hole. He's only digging himself a deeper hole. And I honestly think, I really think he, he sees AEW as this Jack Sparrow-esque pirate ship fighting off the evil Navy and Davy Jones. and uh, But in reality, what it is, is AEW is a drunk guy pissing on the Alamo. Going, ah, I got back at those ghosts. And everyone's just like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, ah, ha, ha, show them. And then they get taken to jail, and then they're like, oh, oh, so you're against freedom of speech, huh? I see. I'm like, everyone's just like, seriously? <laughs> like, seriously? I... <laughs> That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> I, I and I'm just here for it. I, I'm here for the downfall of AEW DVD. I can't wait for that DVD. I, the Blu-ray, I'm buying it. I'm going to put it on my wall back the here. Room. The dark side of the ring of AEW is just going to be called the dark side. Like, a, think about it this way. I follow a couple channels. One of them does icebergs of com uh, icebergs of wrestling. There's an iceberg of oh, wrestling. Women's wrestling. There's... And there's WWE. There's an entire hour and a hour and a half iceberg of just AEW, and it's a five year company. How? How is it that you have an iceberg as long as WWE's? How? That I got nothing to say, man. Like that's insane to me. I can't. 
I, I'm happy I don't support this company anymore. I'm just here for you guys, and I'm here to help with the channel. I watch the show. I always say this, and people will quote me on this. I say it all the time. I have a simple philosophy, and that is PMW, prove me wrong. If you prove me wrong, I will eat my words and I will admit that I'm wrong. That's why I support WWE now. They proved me wrong. I had a preconceived notion about them, which I, Mark can attest to. I was a diehard FWWE guy. And now I support them because it's not the same company it was. But AEW is not even attempting to stay at level ground. It keeps digging it itself a deep grave and then pissing in the grave and then blaming WWE for it drowning. You're doing it. <laughs> You're filling the hole. Instead yeah, of someone I mean, going, Hey, do you want help? Do you need help? No, you're just one of their plants. Yeah. <laughs> now look, I'm not saying they're going down faster than a drunk rapper at P Diddy's house or anything, but oh. they're going down pretty fast. So just uh, the final thing to wrap up this little episode here, because we're going to be doing the Dynasty thing separately. Um, what, or if anything, can Tony Khan do to salvage this now at this point? I don't think there's much that he really can I do, don't, honestly. It, it's, it's less to do, and I think we all can agree with this, it's less to do with what he could and more to do with what he would do. And if he's gone this deep, it's kind of like it's kind of like a person who got caught cheating and they're just like, well, I already did it once. Just keep going. Ah, I think I think that's how he is. I really think he's just so far deep. He can't go out anymore. I don't know or see any way he can dig himself out of it without uh, some written or some form of public apology, because from what I've been reading, because of this fiasco with ESPN, um, WB Discovery pulled their sponsorship or their original streaming deal that they wanted to do with them. Um, that's the rumor. And if that's true, mm. he's only got himself to blame. And it's kind of like, I, I'm not here to point and laugh at you when you fall, but I am here to point and laugh at you when you crap your pants and then say, who crapped my pants? So... <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh so you said like wait so you're saying like wwe was ahead i was i was in talks with um have doing streaming through their espn services no 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 aew oh that's what i thought talks for yeah. years to have a deal with wb discovery that would rival the deal to net that wwe has now with netflix but, that's what i thought okay yeah Okay. We don't yeah. know if that's up in the air. The rumor is that they scrapped that deal. That's the rumor. Scrapped it quicker than a really good DC Comics cartoon. Ooh. That, oh, gosh. No, like I said, I wouldn't blame them if they did drop them because, like I said, that just... I mean, it, uh, no. Mm -mm. I mean, it's and like I said, that's crazy. not even the worst of the backlash. Like, sure, that's a bad backlash for Tony Khan. I want to see what kind of backlash is going to happen now for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Because, again, you were mm -hmm. the whole main reason you were on there wasn't for you to represent your company or talk smack about any other wrestling promotion. It was because you were there as a representative for your father and his football team. That's what I was saying. I've seen what does his father think about, think about all of this. So, I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if there's more and more sponsors that are going to pull themselves away from AEW, from the Jacksonville Jaguars, from Rajit Khan's other business ventures. I really, I don't, I don't see a good outcome for any of this. And again, you know, it's, it's all Khan. It's all, all Tony. I mean, you're a 41 year old man child. What the hell? Mm. Well, the Dutch Martel was saying that the thing with Tony Khan too is that he needs to get a hobby. And he was like, dude, does he have a wife or a girlfriend? You know, like do something where he's not always involved with the business. Let him, you know, some hobby away from it. So he's not I, always having his hands on I, everything. I'm not one to question and I'm not running anyone's sexuality down, but I, I not in a sexual way, in a legitimate way. I think Tony Khan is legitimately afraid of women. 
Oh no, because like, I was actually a while ago. like actually not not in a oh they're so pretty like in a way of like oh I don't want to touch them. Oh no, I really feel that vibe from him. No, I get to say the same thing. Remember, I, I was saying it that time, especially when um uh, at one of the scrums and Tony Storm showed up and he looked like he was like, oh my god, it's a woman. What do we do? So, oh, okay, okay, they're people, right? You know, it just like he's just nervous around them. You know, he 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 know he, you know, he has to give him a hug. He's nervous, but if it's but 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 we all know if it's Claudio, oh yeah. But okay, that's me. But no, no. But seriously though, I think he does, and that's why I started joking about like if Rio shows up, he'll fear for his life. Because I, I, I joke with that too. So yeah, I think he does have this thing with the um, with women. Like maybe he's like he does feel maybe intimidated by them in some way, or he's nervous around them in some way. Yeah, maybe Cargill won't be able to or maybe when he gets nervous, he's like that guy from Grandma's Boys where he starts talking like a robot. <laughs> it freaks him out. Um, you know, he'll just walk by. He'll just be in the hallway. All of a sudden, hey, Thunder Rosa, I like your boobies. You know, just something. Uh, all right, guys. I, so, I explained it the women's division, but we'll help with that. <laughs> so anyways, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up for this one. We're going to come back to do the Dynasty review and everything. So just to kind of get it started and everything, just Mark Rodriguez heading off here. Ninja Panda, 1980, signing out. Jack Nas from Jack Nas Review, signing out. This is Wendy. I'll uh, see you guys later. I'm going to turn it over to the guy who, who's out of the actual work, Johnny Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez, signing off. <laughs>